Hello and welcome to Season 4 of the Sunday Podcast, presented by SportsShoes.com. I'm Ollie Lum. And I'm Matt Seddon. This podcast is all about elite distance running in the UK. We're here to give you all the latest news updates around the sport. As well as weekly interviews with athletes and coaches. Stay up to date by following us on Instagram and X at Sunday Podcast. And make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel too, where we post athlete workout videos, shoe reviews and more. Thanks for listening. And as always, we hope you enjoy the episode. Right, guys, welcome back. Um, we are almost wrapped up um, with these Paris reviews, just the women's marathon to go tomorrow morning. But, mate, what a, what a day of athletics we've had today. Um, and obviously, we haven't chatted about last night either. I'm blown away. It's just it's just crazy, mate. It's absolutely crazy. I mean, the whole Olympic Games has just been off the charts. I mean, I don't think I've watched the race and thought, meh, like... And sometimes you do get that, champ. Sometimes you do get, you know, not last year, but, you know, there's been a few years where the men's 800 has been a little bit, for me, I haven't, I haven't been too invested and, and stuff. But, um, you know, that's just gone up a whole new level. And, I mean, Jesus Christ, that final today. I mean, the women's 15 is scary, scary right now. Um I just don't know, like, like all these performances. Um, and yeah, I just thought the Olympic Games before we get started has just been 10 out of 10. I mean, the marathon earlier on as well. Um, we'll get into all of these events separately because they all deserve their own kind of segment, piece, whatever. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm speechless, man. I just don't know how, there's so many performances. I'm just like, how do how do we put them into context? Like, it's just, they've just been out of this world. Yeah, and, and it's why it's the biggest show on earth, isn't it? And and it's it's why it's so good that it only happens every four years. I think obviously people sometimes it's the critique of the sport, you know, in that everything's about something every four years. But I think it, when it does come around, that's why oh, it just boy. adds the magic. Um, it adds the surprises because honestly, there's been so so many events, and like you say, like it's been great because I don't think we've had that many events where we've had a clear favorite who has gone and gone and dominated. And if that has been the case, we've had people who shouldn't be in the conversation, like no disrespect to them, get in minor medals yeah. uh, in those events. So for example, like that 1500, obviously you might've been able to say, oh, Kipier gone um, it is, is a favorite in that, but then you get Georgia Bell coming third, for example, um, over on the men's side, obviously, Jakob is normally a favourite. He gets B, so does Kerr. So I think with just every race, there's been some sort of surprise, whether it's for a silver or a bronze or whether it's for the for the winner. 100%. And, and I was just kind of thinking today, like, Keeley's victory seems like a lifetime ago. She won the 800. And it almost seems like what she did as a British athlete and just purely dominated that women's 800, she came in as heavy favourite. She lived up to the hype. She just absolutely dominated it. But she almost seems overshadowed now. Like today, you know, we've had Max Bergen back at his best, but we've had Georgia Bell and Emil Caress coming close to the medal. And it's like, wow. And and obviously that men's 1500 coming the night after. And it's just been, it's been a crazy games. And, you know, you talk about, I think it coming around every four years, but Paris in particular feels like it's come around like every bloody seven years because, or eight years, whatever, because Tokyo did not i think for a lot of people like even when we talk about the races and stuff and and how exciting they were and i don't think there's many races in tokyo people look back on and go like that was insane and I, well i think i'm just talking from my own personal opinion but i don't have a memory like the races don't stand out to me in tokyo whereas a lot of olympic games they do you know we can think back to when when farah was in london and and we can think back to uh you know magalufi in the 1500 in london and these iconic races and and you can remember them rudisha like i'm just gravitating towards london because there was again it was a bit like paris to be honest when you do the comparison there were just so many massive races and massive moments that you remember and 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 Rio of course there was a few of them as well but I feel like in Tokyo just didn't didn't have too many of them and I think that's why we almost feel starved of the Olympics and it feels like it's been a long a lot longer than than four years obviously it's only been three but mm. it didn't feel I do, like I do think the crowd the crowd adds that's something. what I mean the stadium and the crowd and the atmosphere it. it makes a massive difference in the experience and I think a lot of people have 
felt connected to Paris because a lot of people that we know in circles and they've gone over there, do you know what I mean? They've experienced it. And I think there's always going to be a bit of a bias there as well. Yeah, and I just think like even if even if the races in Tokyo were kind of top notch, like you say, mate, like in the in the celebrations, there's just you you don't pan to the crowd, you don't kind of yeah see people running over like Mondo, for example, run over to his missus. Yeah, uh, you don't get those moments so much. Um, yeah, I mean, when they do the medal ceremonies in empty stadiums and victory laps, in I mean, did anyone do a victory lap? I can't even remember. So. Yeah, it does feel like we've been starved of, of a fantastic display of athletics. And, and it's funny because obviously we've had some great work. I mean, 2022 and 2023, I mean, especially last year, the World Championships was off the scale. But you, after the Olympics has happened this last 10 days, obviously we've got the women's marathon to go. But it's like, you're right, mate. Like the Olympics is so much more of a big deal. Like, and I think we've been living on World Championships for quite a while because obviously Tokyo was very meh. Um, but the what the Olympic Games is a whole nother level, and the crowd, the people who are invested in it, the exposure like my mates who don't even watch running have been watching every single session. And like, message me that you know, I've had messages like, Damn, when did we get so good at middle distance running? Like, <laughs> um, and that's it. And it's just they, they would never watch a world championships, yeah. Um, I agree, mate. I'll go into work, and everyone's like, Oh, did you watch that race last night? What did you think? Um, and and yeah, obviously these people, yeah, they 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 like they like running, they like athletics, but they would never be so up to date in terms of kind of yeah. athletics, you know. So it's been amazing. Uh, it's Storytelling's been ten out of ten, and there's been time for the stories to build. And each day, you know, we've had different people to focus on, and and that's what's made it so special. But mate, let's get into the action then. Uh, Oh, I mean, yeah, let's work backwards. I mean, by the way, 4 by 4s were just outrageous as well. So, I mean, the whole champs have just been it, – it, it reminds me why, I'm, why I love the sport so much. I think sometimes you in, in the off-season stuff, you, you can lose it a little bit. And listen to Michael Johnson talk about the storytelling and cramming in loads of action and the sport's quite confusing to follow in the off years, et cetera. But, like, when the Olympics is on, you're just like, yeah, there's, there's no sport like it. It's unrivaled. But um, but anyway, the women's fifteen hundred, mate. I mean, Jesus Christ, where do we start? I think we should sure start with Georgia Bell, mate. I think we, <laughs> particularly you, um, but I think both of us, we said, look, she's got a shot. Um, and and as we kind of went through the the rounds, I think watching her, we we both we've both been saying that she's looked like she had more and more of a shot. Um, I think definitely Keeley's Keeley's win must have given her a boost um and her, her post race interview as well talking about how she had no pressure um and i guess with, with, with georgia bell's age as well obviously she's new to the kind of professional side of the sport but she's 30 years old even though it's her first season back she's probably come in thinking it's my first season back but i actually don't have much time to kind of get right get straight to the top you know um mm -hmm. Because she's going to be 34 um, at the next Olympics. And obviously, it's not too old, um, but you're kind of getting towards maybe the 5K, 10K. Um, that's kind of about right. But 1,500, 30, she probably come back just for her, her peak year um, in ter terms of her age. So obviously, we hope she kind of can keep herself, keep herself going. But yeah, it just seemed to be, and as she said in her interview, yeah, kind of everything fell into place um for her this season and it's just been an absolute crazy crazy season i don't think we can almost like understate that enough you know um but like yeah how, how do you how, how do you how do you sum it up mate because i just don't have ever seen anything like that this is what i mean by you know it's just so tough to put into context um you know, national record. I mean, yeah, you're right. You know, I, I feel like the way she she crushed Laura Muir, the British champs, um, and Laura Muir went out and ran 353 after that and and stuff, you're like, well, what amazes me about Georgia Bell is she can't be shifted. Like, I've never actually seen her get, like, drop drops. Like, she wasn't dropped today. Like, she was always hanging on. Like, she's like a leech. You just... it. These are world-class women who have been at the game for 10 years, you know, or at such a high level. 
and they can't get rid of her. She just hung and hung and hung. And, and this is why I kind of, I, I said, like, I think she will medal, you know, and put her as an outside shot to medal because just the way, you know, in the semi, she looked great in the heats, but just also like on the circuit, whenever she's been in a fast race and, and that 800, um, that 156, 800, by the way, was an example at the, at the London Diamond League. And look, I think if she did an 800 tomorrow, she could probably run 155. Like, I think she's that good. And and as that is something that she has over the likes of Hull and Kibiego, and I think I think she's faster than them over over a flat eight hundred. Um, I think she's the fastest in that race over a flat eight hundred. But her progression, man, four oh six last year, three fifty two point six fourteen seconds. Like I don't, I, I was trying to think of like comparisons. Like I just don't think you can compare to anything. Like that is off the charts. It is. It is. Um, it, it's top quality, and I think you could almost. There is hope for us, mate. There is hope for <laughs> us. We're sitting here, bro. There, there is hope. You know, if she can do that in twelve months, what can we do in four years, buddy? <laughs> well, I'll have to start running again. So uh, <laughs> maybe I'll do. I'll do. Um, I'll do duathlons for for a couple of years, and then I'll come back in four years. You know. Um, but yeah, it was oh, just just in, in insane run, and I think when you when you put into context as well how good Kip Yegon is, yeah. um, it's not like Georgia Bell has come and got a bronze in a week, fifteen hundred field. This is the best the fifteen hundred meters has ever been. Ever been. One is thing I would say though, yeah, when we get assembled, into, it's yeah, e easily, easily, and and and, but when we get into nitty gritty of it, when you see that race play out, you know, Segai has done. Yeah. Georgia Bell owes Segai her, her bronze medal. Obviously, not literally, but like Segai, the, I don't know why, like St. Pierre and Hiltz and people like that, like really were persistent at getting on the pace early when it was like 59. Like it was stupidly quick. But I think they truly believed as well. Like I think St. Pierre and people like that and Hiltz truly believed that they were, they were in 353, 352. Yeah, yeah. And I think they probably were had they have run Georgia Bell's race. You know, had they gone 60 mid on the first lap instead of 59, had they have just, you know, been able to settle in the pack a little bit and, and sort of work their way up. And you you think about Laura Muir coming through for fifth as well, by the way, that was a massive run for her, 353. And at the start of the race, you're thinking, oh, my God, she, she can't live with this. But, you know, it, it paid off. Um, and I actually think Muir was like virtually flat out, by the way. Like, I'm not sure if that was a conscious decision to hold back. I think that was a, I can't really go with this. I think it was. I think it was a conscious decision in the first lap. Okay, I think she expected to get back to him quicker. Yeah. After, okay. That's a good. Yeah. That. Fair. After that, I, and I actually think Laura Mule, like fair play to her. That that is a an unbelievable like tactical race from her, and I actually think I don't think she could have done anything more. Um, because like, yeah, you know, say yeah. she's she's come so close to her personal best in in a in a championship, in a third round. So I, I think she's like time that to perfection. It's just not enough. She's just not not as good as she was um, three years ago and four no, years ago. She, she's fine. better. She's better, mate. She's running faster. But no, I just, no, no, I don't. Yeah, I think that's just... I, I just think, think Muir is, Muir is low-key unfortunate that she's been in a generation with bloody Kip Yegon and then like, and like Hassan and then of course like the men, Semenyo. Is Andy Murray. Laura Muir is Andy Murray. Yeah, yeah, Laura, uh, yeah. Other, other, other generations would have been yeah. done. Like, yeah, and she would have had the you know Olympic golds. She would have done like what Farah did, but unfortunately, and and then now you're just looking at it like Jesus Christ, you know, keep getting on hold, Bell, and and to be fair to Sega, like she's still around four hundred one. She's done the ten, the the, the five, the fifteen. Um, had Sega been just fresh for one of them. And and sort of give her one a crack, like say the fifteen hundred, she probably would have featured a bit more. But um, I don't know why she took it out so hard. That was crazy. But um, boy, oh boy, was it entertaining for us. Um, so yeah, I mean, Muir astonishing. Bell, I've got no words, mate. Like honestly, up like I said, just don't know how to break the performance down. I mean, look, she executed the race well, and and funny, I watched Josh Kerback the 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 twenty twenty three worlds back, and he was in fifth, sixth for a lot of that race. And then came up through, um, whereas he was in second for pretty much all the race the other night, you know, a few nights back. Um, and he was on Jakob. And I think 
Jakob knew Kerr would do that. And that's probably why Jakob took it out so hard because he was like, this is how I can wear Kerr out basically because he's going to go with me. But of course he didn't envision Hocker. And, you know, Georgia Bell in a similar instance was just, you know, again, very smart, relaxed, um, didn't, didn't have the pressure to get right on the heels of uh, Segai and and be battling with Hull and people like that, um, and then just came through and geez, five more meters. That, 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 that is it. always the we always speak about this. It's always the benefit of being able to race for bronze, is that you don't have to pay such close attention. Yeah, she's not when Kip Yegon goes to the front and kicks on. She's not worrying about covering no. the move. You know, she's just like, oh yeah. You know, Weltage and, and Hull and, and Muir and people like that were battling and she's like, they'll come back, you know, and, and she can battle with them and hold on to them. So, yeah, I, I think you're right about that. But um, I also think probably got to shout out Hull as well, because actually, well, we've seen, if anything, from these on. champs, right, we've seen that being kind of the pest on the circuit does not guarantee you um, your medals. Yeah. Um, and, and so to come, like, I think on, on paper, she, she, she comes in as as the favorite for that silver, um, almost like in a similar way as some people have come in for favorites to gold, just because Kip Yegon's so kind of different um, to everyone else, so much better than everyone else that actually, yeah, coming in and actually making sure she, she nailed that silver, um, like fair play to her as well, you know? hundred percent, hundred percent. So yeah, the women's 1500, two Americans in seventh and eighth, um, 356 to 357. Good running from them and Susan Ajora as well. She trains in America, 3-6-0. Like, yeah, because just the, that race, I was just taken aback. Um, so there we are. You're going to hear those words a good bit. Um, working backwards in main, men's 5K, I mean, is this the start? I mean, Jakob's won three back-to-back world, you know, global, global goals. He's so dominant, man. They can't get near him. I like... He's cruising around that top bend. Like how he he's unbeatable. He's literally unbeatable with the 5K. He's Mo Farah. Like they can run 1239 on the circuit, but like Gabriel kicks on, you know, with 600 to go and it's not fast enough. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it was 56.9. Like that's not fast enough to break Jakob when it's a, you're talking about a kilometer race, really. Like it was a 1K race. It's like no chance. Like this is the start. Uh, I, I think he should move up to the five and ten. To honestly, the art. I think he will, but I think losing the fifteen is going to keep him there. I think had he had he won the fifteen, he's more. I think that's that's what makes him more likely to move up. <laughs> you know, do you know what? He's, like we said, he's still twenty three, mate. He like, could potentially do. The, he could potentially do the fifteen hundred in LA and be twenty seven, and then he could go to. Uh, Brisbane after that and be 31 years old. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Jakob like start running halves like when he gets into that stage of his career. Like I think he's done one before when he was quite young. Um I think all three of them did as like a training run in Norway, you know. Um but like yeah. mate, you've got to think that guy would be absolutely I remember that actually ruthless in a half marathon. What I find interesting though, um the fact that Quemoy in second, he's the only other one who is a fifteen hundred meter runner. Like back in 2014, the guy around 328. Um, and and it just shows you, mate, it's exactly what you're talking about. It's being able to being able to kick. Um, and I think it's so weird, but and and people used to say about Farah as well, why don't they just run quick? But no one is willing to sacrifice their chances of a bronze medal to try and beat the guy out of gold. And I think that's why we'll never see these absolutely crazy five 10k like t- times really is because they're not they're not willing well especially the five they're not willing to work together um because I, I think that's the only way you beat Jakob like you say is if you go run 1235 in the Olympics mm. but who's willing to put in that work and, and sacrifice their own potential bronze or whatever it is you know mm-hmm. yeah that is the problem and yeah, it'll just it'll just continue to be a problem. I mean, the Ethiopians to be fair to them, like their change of pace is just phenomenal. Like they are electric when they change gear, but they can't make it, like if it was a jog fest to a hundred to go, I honestly think they'd win. Like I've got no questions. Yeah, do you know, like, like they just nip out everywhere. Just goes, yeah. Like 
But then I don't know if it's relative. You know, I don't know if it's more when we see Gabby Wet change gears, he goes from running 64s to 57. And we're like, oh, my God, like, obviously, that looks like a massive change in pace. Mm. So, yeah, maybe maybe they're not that good at changing pace, but it's just a changing pace off of like a very, very slow pace. I don't know. So, um, but, but yeah, I mean, the men's five, I mean, yeah, I, he just... He's king of the five, and, and like you said, I just can't see him be getting beat. And and you're you're probably right. I think the fact that he is doing the fifteen hundred, and he and he is still training for the fifteen hundred, is keeping him dominant over the five thousand. If he if he legit moved to the five thousand, would he had the same wheelhouse? Would he work the speed, the you know, top end the same and and stuff? And would he get a little bit carried away with maybe chasing a faster time over the five k? Probably. Um, and that may cost him. Then you know, someone else may come along with a faster finish than him. So. I think it's just interesting and it, I think it's great to, that he's done three doubles back to back and they've all pretty much played out in the same way. Um, but I was just surprised how easy he had it, uh, to be honest with you. Fisher, exhausted from the 10, gets a bronze medal as well. That was another huge run from him. Yeah. He has had an absolutely epic chance and, and that move back to his high school coach, saw an interview with him, you know, he, he basically just wanted... What Jerry did was great, but he just needed a little bit more individualization, a little bit more specificity, and um, he's nailed it, man. Yeah, and, and he I lives also at altitude full time now. So yeah, I also think those those years with Jerry though they allow you to do that. Yeah, you're probably like right. he's had how many years with Jerry? Did he have four maybe after yeah. Stanford? Yeah, you've got four years of running from what we know about. BTC, obviously BTC in their peak as well. Four yeah. years of running with basically most of the best guys in the world over that sort of distance. Yeah. And serious kind of threshold work um, constantly at high mileage. Like I, th I think doing that and then kind of spending some time, um, yeah, doing some specific work, even if it's kind of more solo. Um and getting yourself ready to race. It's the, it's the key, isn't it? So I, yeah, well, what a performance from him. And, and obviously, mate, we're guilty of this. We literally, we always refer to him as like the nearly man. Um, and then, yeah, this, this champs is well and truly paid off for him. He's delivered. Yeah. Yeah. He's delivered, man. And at last K 221, that's the fastest last K we've seen at a champs for a long, long time, I think. That was uh, very, very impressive. And um, and yeah, I think if anyone's walking away from this Olympic Games and like, look, if you're ever going to get on the podium, you just need to finish fast. And like, and I think that's period, like even further down the pyramid as well, because I think there's a real tendency, like people don't worry about their kick until they've made it to the top. Whereas I almost feel like you're never going to make it to the top. If that's if that's the kind of way you approach the sport, and you look at the people who have made it to the top, like Josh Kerr, renowned for his kick, even through the A troops, even through the NCAs, renowned for winning races, renowned for finishing fast. You know, Grant Fisher, same thing. Ingebrigtsen is probably the only guy who has never been renowned for his kick, but everyone else has. And I do think Ingebrigtsen is in. A you bit say of that. I think in Ingebrigtsen as a junior, you, you'd say he, he could kick. Do you know what I mean? He was able to kick relative to his to his age groups. It's just it's just at the top level, you know, that we're saying he doesn't have a kick. Did, yeah, did, and I still think he has a kick against, like, I mean, he does have a kick over five thousand. Actually, he has the best kick yeah, that anyone's ever yeah, seen. So, yeah, I just yeah, I, and I think that's what I'm trying to say. It's just like I think if you're if you're an athlete now. And and like Cole Hawker, prime example, like Cole Hawker's kick has been phenomenal, like his whole life. But then, you know, he's just got that extra bit. And it's probably easier to to work on that extra bit than work on your kick. Mm. You know, like that that thing just can't be trained in at the highest level. You know, everyone's got a half decent kick, but what's gonna what's gonna get you on the podium? What's gonna get you through the rounds? You need a sprint finish. And and look, you know, the, the one British athlete in this race, George Mills, like he's he's had a rough Olympics in the sense that he's done five races. And do you think that's gonna gonna pay off for him in the long run? Like, would he have just I think he's probably learned a heap. Like I do think towing the line five times at Olympic Games. Wait, 
Yeah, five times. Yeah, I was going to count the rep charge, but he didn't make the final, did he? So, oof, I mean, that's got to count for something, hasn't it? Hey, just, yeah, just the mental fatigue of all of that. And also just the highs and the lows, I think, of going, getting knocked down the heat, having to come back from the rep charge, getting through that and being like, okay, I've got another shot. Getting knocked down in the 5K heat, then getting put through, it's, that, that mental toll is huge. I, I'll be really interested to see if he... if he is interested in doubling again, you know, um, or whether he's like, actually, I'm just going to go for the five. I think we talk about, I think if we, we talk about like him and Westy, right. Probably the ones where you're like, okay, if they can, if they can get themselves in like really good kind of 5k specific fitness, their kicks will, will stand them in good stead um, in races like we saw today. Yeah. Yeah, I, I honestly, I feel like Westy, like, if if he keeps progressing the way he's progressing, I do, I do think he'll be in LA. Like, uh, I think he'll make a world championships in the next in the next two years as well. Um, we'll see as soon as he does, he'll be the one that we're going, yeah, he's got a shot at the final. <laughs> That's the thing. I, I I honestly thought the way those final the, the way those heats are run, I thought he had a bit of a shot at the final anyway. Yeah. Um, I just saw the bloke run a 335 tonight, looked very good at a Berry Grand Prix. Um, Cooper Tier, by the way, also looked phenomenal. 333 on British soil, completely framped around the Grand Prix. Um, probably probably equates to a 330, to be honest, in the Diamond League, maybe even quicker. So, you know, the fact that he was left home as an American just shows you how strong their team is. But um, but yeah, you know, I I, I think I think Mills probably will maybe just respect the the challenge a little bit and go, well, actually, if I really want to perform. I probably have to just focus on on one. Yeah. So I think so, and it's interesting. It's, it's similar to I remember Whiteman speaking in an interview once about how he always wanted to do the eight and fifteen double, and his dad wouldn't let him until he won one, and he was like, "Look, you need to you need to win one, and then you can start thinking about doubling." You know. Yeah, because if you don't one, like if you don't know what it takes to make a final, like how can you actually talk about like doubling because. You know why are you doubling then? Just uh, just to bump out in the rounds. Do mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, what's the what's the point? Like, the aim is to get as high, you know, as close to the top as possible. Um, so, yeah, I feel like that will be that will be his next challenge, right? But uh, all things considered, I think um, you know, fair play to him. He really he really had to ride away with this Olympic Games, um, and do kind of do kind of respect him for that. So, but that pretty much crowns out all the, I guess, all the drama and it, this drama and stuff in in the five k and and the race itself. I mean, did anyone underperform? I mean, not really. All the guys who got put through by, um, you know, by default or whatever, got bumped into the final. Um, yeah, none of them. Did Labalo actually fall? I think Labalo might have fell, mate. And the geez, I can't remember. There's been so much. You may. I couldn't tell you about looking, mate. I feel like I feel like he got bumped bumped in. But yeah. I'm trying to just have a look. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, yeah. He, he got he got bumped in. Yeah, I'm just looking now. Yeah, I thought he did. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you know, I was I was gonna say like all those guys who got bumped in did struggle. Um except the body. That was my point there. Fourth for him. So, hey, men's 5,000. Then what, what a race. And, and Jakob is, is just the king of the 5,000 right now. Three years on the trot. That's seriously impressive. It is. And I think it's the one that, yeah, we, we all know that he, he dominates. I'd have, I'd have loved to see him against um, Chep the guy after his performance the other night. Um, but I guess we'll have to wait for another another chance to see that match up, you know. Also, just showed you how good Farah was. You know, Farah, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16. Jeez. When it comes to championship racing, Farah's the GOAT. It's actually scary. Talking to Farah, mate. Um, oh, we're going to talk through this 800 quick, but talking to Farah, I actually saw him on the course, like sprinting alongside. Um, he was wearing like a little blue Nike outfit. And I thought it was him when the race was going on, the marathon. And I was like, that's definitely Farah, like sprinting alongside them, cheering him on. And at the end of the race, I see him congratulate Bashir and he was wearing exactly the same kit and or clothes, whatever. 
And I was like, yeah, that's definitely Farris. So jokes, man. He's just like, he's just a big kid, isn't he? You just got to love him. Um, so, yeah, uh, we'll talk about the men's marathon because that was just unbelievable as well. But men's 800 then, I was just seeing whether it could qualify, whether it topped Paris, basically. And I think it has done because four men sub 142 and, and that has never, ever happened. Yeah, you... You see, you see this kind of final, and it just gives you shades of shades of twenty twelve. Obviously, not quite. Um, but did we at the start of this season? If you'd said, "Yeah, it's going to take one forty one one nine to win the Olympics," you'd have been like, "Yeah, you're having a laugh." Um, we we have not seen a Andrew running like it in ten years, particularly not in a championship, um, and the. And the Andrew Meter title has stayed in Kenya. Um, we talked about it before the champs. Um, we were like, yeah, it's it's been what since since Beijing, mate, in 08? The best event. They're actually they they have actually, you know, Barkit Biegon, I guess Chebet on the women's side, but let's just let's just talk men's side actually. Like fifteen hundred don't seem to be up to much anymore. Five K don't seem to be up to much. Ten K, meh. Do you know what I mean? It is it's their best event, man. I guess it's that's that's legacy though, isn't it? From having countless champions, um, particularly Rudisha, of course. But that's just that's just legacy. And I think it's in the same way people grew up in this country wanting to be fifteen hundred meter runners that and that, that stems back to Ko Ovet, Cram. Um and obviously you you got the guys now, White Munker, inspiring people and others. Um, I think yeah, it's it's that it's that inspiration, right? And yeah, Wanyoni, unbelievable run. Um, his teammate Kenya Mao, not even in the final. Um, but he, he... I tell you what though, Wanyoni, what to to front run that with pressure as well. Like when Rudisha did it, he wasn't under pressure. Obviously, Rudisha ran quicker, but like by point two a second or whatever. But Wanyoni was under pressure. Like he was being hassled, like he was being gunned down that last hundred, and he's still like gun to take one forty one nineteen, and and Arop as well. By the way, like I've got to give credit to him because I I was a little concerned about him coming into these champs, but actually mm -hmm. he has peaked at the right time. And mate, you can't do more than lose the Olympic title by a hundredth of a second, one forty one twenty area record. That that is just that is bonkers. So Jai, you know, 140 away just outside his PB and, and Hopple as well. I mean, I said Hopple for goal, long shot. Um, if you said the goal, there was going to be, you said to me, Hopple would come forth in 141, six. I'd be like, what the hell? Well, that's <laughs> it. If you, if you were like, if you were like, oh yeah, Hopple, Hopple runs a, uh, a US record, right? Um, does he win? You'd be like, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but he's done, he's he come forth. So, do you know what's interesting? I mean, when Yoni, you know, Hopple's changed coaches, doing a little bit more volume now. When Yoni does volume, like A Rock definitely doesn't. Since snippets of him on YouTube, he is just raw speed. But Sajati with his last hundred, like you got to think like they're maybe eight runners are starting to do a little bit more volume than than we give credit for. But maybe that's unfair because you know, you've got people like Max Bowen in two hour, and you're just like these guys just hammer but then Artui of Spain like he's definitely more volume base you know he's in the OAC Europe group and and they're I think they're just getting better I remember the podcast with Steve Cram that we spoke to you know he's like actually running 25 points is not that difficult but doing four of them back to back is so like you need to be really really strong to do an 800 you need to be able to sustain that speed and I think maybe you know this year proving that I mean we don't know I'm just guessing but Maybe people are, you know, just attacking a little bit more volume when it comes to 800. I know, like, we had Stoney on, he talked about Ben Patterson, and, you know, he's a 142 man and how how strong his 5K is and stuff. Um, so there you go. It's my thoughts on the 800 and why it's so quick. I think maybe they've just, yes, they're still keeping the intensity, but I think they are, I think they must be doing a little bit more volume. I mean, so George mentioned Kenya Mao doing close to 30K long runs, like, as an 800 runner. What? I do think it's just the I think it's the event where the training is the most so hard to specific. get right. 
specific, but I think the training is the most individual, depending on what tools you have. That's what I mean, yeah. Whereas, like, and, and I think it doesn't lend itself to, like, other events, right? Like, we talk about Jakob and we're like, he's training for 1500, that's what makes him so good at the five because you have to be doing all of it. I, I, I bet the, these... Like say 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 you put the eight guys and the fifteen guys, and you're like, we take their best kind of, we take the best results out of them doubling. I don't think any of the eight guys come out near the top. If we like worked out, I I guess like world ranking points right for a performance, and and you have to going to be cool. You have to yeah. rate an eight and a fifteen. Like by doing any eight guys come out on top. Well, I think the fifteen yeah. guys do because they're the, the training they do allows them to run quick over the eight. Yeah. Because they're doing it for the 15, but I think the eight training, like, yeah, maybe their 15 is not as good, but it's just so specific. Oh, yeah. And let's be real. You know, like, let's be real. When these when these eight guys are just a fraction off their form, they run 144. Yeah. Like, they, you know, it, it, the 800 is one of those races where, like, if you're on, you can just, you, know, you just, it's a freak performance. And, like, do we think these guys are going to gonna break their times? Like, do we think when you're new, Aerop Sajati and Hoppel, like are going to go quicker, like four men to improve on their already 141 times. That's probably very unrealistic. Like they may have just run their best met a bit like everyone in that 2012 race ran their PB that day, because I just don't know how you ever replicate a race like that. The Olympic final stadiums packed, the Olympic, the atmosphere is absolutely bonkers. And you all come in in, in the best shape you've ever been in, you know, the absolute pinnacle of your career. So be interested to see what happens to Bergen over the next few years. Whether he can, whether he can build off that. That's some, I, I thought that was a massive breakthrough for him. And hey, I agree. Yeah, just like get just just get in the final. Like we we've seen it so many times. We've had so many good eight hundred runners in this country who've not made major championships finals. I see. I think he was unlucky that the race was so fast. If that was a one forty four race, I think he could have featured a lot higher up. Yeah, but because it was so quick, I think then yeah, you you know we talk about these guys potentially doing a lot more volume and stuff like he definitely hasn't been able to do that because of his injuries um so it's cost him a little bit but uh yeah 143 and in the semi as well big performances from him um but yeah the men's 800 definitely the event on fire at the moment and i'm sure it will go in waves but like surely we're not gonna see you reckon we're gonna see world record soon Next year. Well, that's it. You you talk about year. if they do improve, we are we're gonna have to see a world record. You know, what I mean? are we gonna see a world record? Because I guess they would argue fresh legged in a pace race, they'll they'll run a world record. But it doesn't always work like that, man. Yeah, I do think with the eights, like in terms of the rounds, right? Unless you kind of they're good for you. They're good for you. Sharpen the senses. Get the legs moving. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like I don't, I don't think it's quite the same in terms of. Like fatigue. I feel like if, if you could do if you could replicate what they've done on the circuit, the problem is on the circuit you have, you have to travel. Mm. So you always go into if you do a race on a Wednesday and then another one on a Saturday, you go in a bit leggy, you've traveled, you've traveled to the one on a Wednesday the day before you T too many factors to get right. But when you're in the same place, if you could replicate that on the circuit, I reckon like it's well with the semifinals, like everyone looks really good in the semifinals. Mm. You know, sometimes. but that's it. Like, say, say the semi, like, say it was just a heat, then a final, and then we just stuck a pacemaker in the final. I mean, that's how you get their best race just one pacemaker. You're like, yeah, but yeah, yeah, pacemaker to, to 600 in the final. Just go, here we are, boys. Yeah, you're probably right, man. Um, so yeah, mate, that was the uh, men's 800 was very, and I think as well, like, it's worth noting how even that race was, by the way, like. 141.1, it went through 50.3 at the bell. Mm. Like, that's so even. It's pretty much bang on, you know? Um, and we've always said that's the fastest way to to do an eight. But it, I think it's hard when no one, no one, like, you need someone to drive that third 200. That's it. It's not just, it's not just the 400 split. It's how you run the first lap as well, though. Yeah, like you got to look at the hundred splits because like uh, the eight hundred, you run the first two sometimes, like particularly the NCA, right? They run they run fifty fifty one quite a lot, but the first two they run like twenty three twenty four, and it's just 
you just you just you just fuck the whole race. Yeah, you're way um, out of that door. So yeah. yeah. Hey, let's yeah. uh let's let's move on to the uh to the marathon, shall we? Because that was just whew, very, very special. Yeah, we gotta start with a meal, don't we? Um and I saw apologies, can't remember who it was, someone someone commented on our on the Instagram post earlier and they were like, Yeah, that's gotta be the best pound for pound British performance of the Olympics and I guess until Georgia Bell's result, you would probably agree with that, wouldn't you? Maybe even with Georgia Bell's result. Look, the guy's ahead of a mill. Benson Kipper is run two oh two. Bashir Abdi's European record holder, two oh three thirty six. Sam Rattola is a two oh three man as well, and he's won several major marathons. Just a big championship performer, Tola, isn't he? And he's a big championship perform performer. And Emil was twenty seconds, twenty nine seconds off the off a bronze medal. And like, all I'm saying is the guys in front of him were two oh three men, two oh three, two oh two men. And what can Emil run? I mean, Jesus Christ, mate! Like, I think two oh four is probably underestimating him. That performance today was just, oh my god, when he was just crowning out the top of that hill, twenty nine k. 30k he was looking interestingly as well him and Toto were very similar physiques they were you know they're both quite tall obviously super skinny but I just wondered like they just seemed to both of them just seemed to handle the hills really really well and on the first one was like the first time we really saw a mill uh, the one between was it 15 and 20k and like he just started to come up on the outside as if to say like he's just feeling really good on the hills. And whether they both just really trained for them or whether like there was something to do with like their stride length and the way they were just able to just breeze up it. But they coped with it way, way more. But what they what Mill didn't cope with, obviously, was the downhill. And ah, it was a bit of a shame that downhill was so steep um, because he just, like I said, he did so much damage on that up. But they just came back to him a little quick and, and then he rallied. But... But yeah, back to pound for pound performance, mate. I just thought, yeah, it's probably it's probably fair. And I do think George Bell was like in in the era of 1500 running, we're in that is just yeah. nuts. Um, to be honest with you, yeah, it's, it's the, I mean, yeah, those those, those two. Um, obviously, we have a bit of recency bias, but um, yeah, they 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 do stand out, don't they? And I think that the the question you ask about the about how quick Emil can run, I think the great thing about his performance today is that doesn't actually matter. I think it's the what he's prepared for is he's prepared to finish as high up as possible today on that course in those conditions. And and that is what has paid off for Emil Caress. Um and you obviously went out to to Italy, spoke to Canova, spoke to him, watched some training. Um, and they were very meticulously preparing for the challenges that this race was going to throw, they weren't going out there and purely trying to get a meal in his best ever um, marathon shape in terms of pace. Agreed. I also think everyone else was training meticulously as well um, for it. You know, everyone else was and doing, you know, all the heat stuff and all the hill work and, and everything like that. Um, I just think Emil is... He's the real deal. And I look at him, I'm like, what's next for him? I think Marathon Majors. I think he needs to, uh, he's already got bronze in in London. Third place there, I'm looking like, you know, is, is it worth him just branching out a little bit? Is it worth him going to Boston, going to New York, going to Chicago? You know, maybe these other ones and, and trying to pick, I mean, Boston, just that sticks out just because of the hills and but then again it's more downhill isn't it he didn't didn't do too well on the downhill so maybe not but like yeah maybe going to a slightly tougher marathon major New York. yeah one like that where where you know he can really put himself in the history books obviously massive paydays and stuff and one thing i would say mate is that was the best marathon i've ever watched it was so much better than any pace marathon i've ever watched i think pace marathons they're great and then people drop off i mean I remember being, I think my excitement was a very similar level to when Kipchoge broke two hours in, in, in Vienna. I think that's that it. day I was, I was absolutely buzzing that day. And like, I, I was glued to it. You know, you're looking at every split commentators were doing a phenomenal job, you know, talking about it. You've got amazing world-class paces coming in and out. And that was real high class entertainment, but that today was on par. The, it, the problem with these, the pace races is they're only exciting when you're seeing them run a world record. 
Yeah, as soon as they slip off world record, you're like, ah, yeah, they're all, they're all blowing up. Ah, you so, know, um, you're dead right. We get, Whereas... spoiled, we get spoiled by by that in a way, so that now we're like, I don't know, back 10 years ago, like you're know, running 204, you're like, ah, oh, you're getting super gassed by the splits, and now you're running 204, you're like, yeah, what's even the point? Don't even matter. Um, uh... It's yeah, unless people, yeah. unless people are going for standards and, and that's like, it, you know, that's and, it, and, and then day, and then yeah, you you watch today and you're like, it's just ruthless, every single place. It, it's 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 reminiscent of cross country, which obviously we we love, like in a way, you know, like the the times are relevant. It's just about battling out there um, to try and finish as high up as you can. Yeah, um, here's the question. Yeah, I mean, I, I exactly thought it was that. And it was unpredictable and people were doing well on different sections of the course. And I think that's what, that was what was exciting. You know, the hill came and Mill was flying. Oh, my God, the guy's going to get a medal. Downhill comes. Oh, boy, like he's doing so well to hang on. And then obviously they focus on Tola and the leaders and then bloody come around the bend and Mill's in fourth. He's like, what? Um, but, yeah, it was just it was just fantastic. Tola, by the way, phenomenal. But, um Here's a question. I wonder if Emil, will he do the World Championships next year? Like, will he look at that and go, ah, oh, can I? Because I guess that would that would be history if he if he won the World Champs in the marathon. It'll be so interesting to see his next move. We won't know for a little while, I'm sure. He'll have to digest that Canova's scheme of plan. Um, I think... Canova's already got the plan, actually. Yeah. What am I saying? Canova's got that five-year plan locked. Yeah, of course he has. I think, and I don't know if it's a, I don't know if it's a British thing that I I do feel like we'll see Emil target target the championships. I think when there's a world champs marathon, when there's an Olympic marathon, I I think we will see him want to want to represent Great Britain um, and, and compete in those. The only thing I would say is rather than the majors. I think you've got to be, I mean, British athletics being British athletics would, I mean, he, he'd qualify for Tokyo for his world ranking, no doubts about that. But would British athletics allow him to? Would they make him go run the bloody 206.30? Like, so then he'd have to like churn out another performance in, in London or somewhere and then, and then prepare for Tokyo. Like, does he want to do that? Um, but also, I think the only thing I, I compare it to is like Callum Hawkins and like, Callum Hawkins is phenomenal. Yeah, he got a few world champs fourth places. Mm -hmm. um, but is there a part of Callum Hawkins which maybe wishes he did? Because in marathon running, like I do feel like the Olympics is massive and then and then it's the majors. And then the worlds are the worlds are behind. The worlds are behind a major. You know, and I wonder if a part of Hawkins does wish maybe he did a few more majors um and stuff, but maybe not. It's interesting. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, even the Olympics, mate, I think it's behind. No, no, no. Olympics is Perhaps. bigger. I think it's bigger. It's bigger than London Marathon. The problem is London Marathon, like, over the last 10 years, like, it's so many different winners. You know, like, it's not... You go down in the history books, but the Olympics is... It's bigger, mate. It's just bigger, okay? I think. Yeah, I, I, mate, I think it's close. I think... Had, hmm, I don't know, mate. I, I think I think if a, if a Brit won the won the London Marathon, right? I, I think it would be huge. Not as big as if a Brit won the Olympic Games. Brit won the Olympic Games and marathon. I think it's bigger, way bigger. I think it's big. It's bigger for athletics fans in the Olympics. I think it's bigger for the nation in if in the London Marathon. I don't know why. I I just feel like because of the because of the mass race appeal, and like the way the British public talk about the London Marathon, I think it it does does give it that mm. a bit of edge, you know. Mm. I disagree. Be interested to hear what the viewers say, but but yeah, I mean, goodness, what other stories came out of that marathon, man? It, again, it does. Feel I mean, like even just to, even just Tola's like right. The guy was a reserve, and he came in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Came into the team. What good, six, good place six to start. Came into the team six weeks six weeks ago. Um, and I think we said on the on the preview like the guy is a proven 
championship racer um, when it comes to when it comes to world champs and Olympic marathons. Like one thing I do want to say as well is Bashir Abdi, um, phenomenal, and Gary Loff. He's got to be probably like you know we we talk about Canova obviously and Mel's working with him, but Gary Loff is as far as marathons come, the success he's had is outrageous. Um, I would say he's one, he is probably, yeah, pretty much the best marathon coach out there. Like what he can get Bashir to do. I mean, Bashir was injured in January. Bashir had a sacral stress fracture in January, comes out 2647. He's a European record holder. He gets silver, like turns up on the day. He got bronze last year. And obviously Nagay gets silver, sorry, last year, last Olympics. And I got to give it to him, man. He is, he is phenomenal. Getting these guys in shape, whipping them into shape. Yeah, I think I think it's in, it's impressive because sometimes you see coaches in in his position, obviously with with super Paul. talent. No, I, I was I was gonna say like you, you you see like coaches a bit like um when you get like your father and son coaches like Jeff Wyman, Jake Wyman, for example. Yeah, you see him have these the great coaching career, great kind of coaching accolades, but it's with with, one that, one, with that one athlete who they are. Yeah. Like obviously super invested with super close to. Um and but you don't often see them then carry that on to to other people outside of yeah that athlete. Obviously, like Gert, for example, with with Jacob. Um, I know obviously he's coaching um coaching Nordas and stuff now, but I think like you think about these kind of like Sebco's Peter Co, for example, with with Sebco, like it's it's very, very different. Um to then yeah. take that to, to someone else because it's a completely right. different approach. Um, and, and yeah, the way he's been able to kind of double back um, and, and get another medal today um, for, for Bashir, it's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, you did right. And, you know, on Gert as well, I do wonder, Gert was still coaching Jakob, would he be a 1,500-meter world or Olympic champion? Well, he's already Olympic champ, isn't he? But would he have done better over the 1,500 the last couple of years? And I think he would have. I do question Jakob's tactics when it comes to 1500 sometimes, but I'm sure so does everyone. But there we go. There you have it. Conor Mance, Clayton Young, good performances from those two. They've had a great story on uh, more Clayton Young on YouTube. That has been good. Um, they both ran 2.8. Um, yeah, Akasaki, by the way, Japanese guy, 207.32. Imagine, imagine your PB coming on that course. I mean, for a minute, I thought a mil. There were, I think it was about maybe 4K to go, maybe 5K to go. I thought Mill was on for a PB. I was looking at splits. I was like, he's only got a string of few 305s or 302s together, I think. So, which is obviously is quite hard. <clears throat> but I was like, if he runs like his next 4K in just over 12 minutes, he's going to run a PB. I was staggered. But um, but yeah, I think that last bit, they all they all suffered big time, like Galetta and, and Akasaki, like Mill managed to swamp them up and go by him. So we... Last thing you want is a sprint finish, but in a marathon, but a mill pulled it off. So, yeah, we have. Hey, what about, dude, what say, about uh, Sesman and uh, Mohammed as well? Yeah, obviously, I think, I don't think, no disrespect to the guys, I don't think we expected them to feature. Um, but I just think it's, it's great that we've kind of managed to send a, a strong marathon team, um, a strong marathon team to an Olympics. And I'm sure we'll see the same with, with the women tomorrow. Um, in terms of, I, I just think in previous years we've seen quite a few like people pop big time. Um, yeah. when it comes to championship marathons, um, so I think yeah, so, solid performances from them. Obviously, particularly Sessman, like forty sixth is nothing to be kind of. No man, and two thirteen, yeah, yeah, two thirteen or eight on that course. I mean. Not horrendous and and, and Kipchoge of course clapping the uh, clapping the last runner through. Um, I, I would I think Kipchoge should have finished it. I really do. He should have finished it. He should have. He would have had a crazy standing ovation. I almost think it would have been, you know, quite jokes, quite fitting. Like if he did come across the line, even if he was in last place, and like crowd just going wild and and stuff. You know, he he should have got to the line for me, but he steps off anyway. Fair play, but. And this is why Bikili for me will go down as the goat because you know he's you know he, he got it done out there. He finished and you know 39th, 212, 24. Respectable. 
This was the NCA beyond the podium, mate. So <laughs> he's an all he's an all global, mate. All all Olympian. All he's Olympian. an all Olympian, mate. So, he's an all Olympian. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. We 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 did we did get we got a bit excited the other day, didn't we? We thought it was going to be the uh, the showdown between the two kids. Hey, Canova told me. Yeah. I asked Canova. I said, "Who's got the best chance?" He said, "Bikini." I, he I he, he wanted to take it. the pressure off a meal, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I took his word for it. I I didn't have a clue. Who knows how Bikini trains? We never know, right? But um, yeah, I think as an era of marathon running, though, I guess. Kipchoge was adamant he's not going to another marathon. He said he'll be there in maybe a different capacity. Can he inspire? Can he motivate others? And I think this is the end, mate. I think I think 2024, I mean, Bikili announced he was going to retire last year. Signed some new deal with uh, a Chinese brand. Is that Antara or something? And then, um, yeah, Kipchoge's just still going strong, but he, he's, he has consistently had his worst performances back-to-back. I think so. I think it's it's about Over time Kipchoge Kipchoge stopped. Uh, just just went and enjoyed his uh, enjoyed his winnings, you know. Because um, we hear the stories about him, kind of. He, he's still still living in that athlete house. Um, yeah, mate. Just, Tough. Still grinding. Just loves it though, doesn't he? he absolutely loves it. Which is obviously he we does. Love it, so in the routine. Yeah. I almost so, think because in recent because he's still been racing in recent years. You started like it's taken the shine off his performances but i think look once he's retired for like six months a year and we don't see him on the start lines everyone's gonna be like yeah we'll go back to kind of the like looking at him as as obviously the greatest of all time um not that we don't but do you know what i mean i think it's just he, he's seen so it's seen so he seems so human sorry in the past couple of years that we've almost forgot but as soon as he retires yeah and and, and it does happen it does happen you know and it it's it, it, Bakili as well. You almost because they're still running, you forget what they've done mm. because you measure them on on their recent performances. Yeah. You know, you, you measure Bakili and, and Kipchoge on 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 their marathon performances that they've done. And they've, you know, dropped out or you know, finished 30, 19 Olympic marathon, stuff like that. So which is a shame. I, I, I do think it's probably time for them both. And it was it was a fitting way and cool way to do it in Paris. So there you have it, man. I mean, do you want to talk about the winner of the competition if you've made it this far? Mate, we've got the women's 10K. It's from last night as well, mate. Um, we've... Oh, fuck. Because we, 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 didn't, we didn't record yesterday. And that was... Oh, <laughs> that was a hell of a race as well. Um, obviously, Chebet took the win coming back from that five. But let's talk about Batacoletti because... Pound for pound, Batacoletti's had the best <laughs> yeah. run in the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> hey, absolutely. Um her kick as well. I thought she might win the whole thing. Um, I think she just didn't believe me. Honestly, she didn't think she was going to. And then I think 50 to go, she was like, what? Where am I? Like, and then she went again. But I think she was like so fixated on again a medal. But uh, I think she was surprised how close she was to Chebet at the end. And I think now going forward, world champs, Olympic Games, she's going to be like, yeah, I can contend for gold. Yeah, and I, and I believe I heard on commentary that is the first time a European-born athlete um, has won a medal um, in that women's 10K, which is a hell of a stat. Yeah, that's bad. It was crazy. It was, it was tactical for a long time, and she's still run 30-43 national record. Uh... Yeah, I mean, and obviously, <laughs> San, um, more more hardware for her, um, and obviously coming back tomorrow morning. So, watch out, um, Helen. Christ. Yeah, what's what's Hassan going to do? Um, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, I mean, surely not. Surely she can't. She can't live with these women. Um, and and the men's race was. I wonder if the women's race will be slower though, and it, it will dawdle for a lot longer because then everyone gets to the hills a little bit fresher. Whereas the men's race, like, they really, it, 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 didn't, it didn't look that slow. I can't, I can't quite remember what the halfway split was, but I don't think it was ever like that, that slow in the men's race, um, to be honest with you. And then, but what they did do is when they got to the hill, they just, just took off, didn't they? Um, I think the men's race was like maybe 15, 
10, 15, 15, around that sort of tempo, wasn't it, for a lot of it, which I guess is 05s, but it's not it's not horrendous. I think it's still like 2-9 pace, isn't it? Yeah, I'm shouting it now. I think they went through 5k and 15.40, so that's fairly slow. Shit, it was slow, actually. God, they they just... 64.51, wow. Fucking hell, and they had the climb. <laughs> You're wrong. They climbed the second half, mate. Yeah. It's um, crazy. Yeah, I know they went like 14 20 on some of the day. Oh, Mill went 14 mate, 20. I could just spend hours on here looking at split time. Yeah, to be honest, mate. Like, it's yeah, so actually, yeah, guys, if you're listening, yeah, and you have made it this far and you are, so you must be a bit of an athletics geek. Um, the on the if you go world athletics Olympic results, they've got all the all the like the good, the good stuff on there, the good splits and stuff. So, um, check that out if like us, you um, you enjoy looking at that, but. Yeah, mate, that pretty much pretty much wraps us up. Obviously, that yeah, that women's ten k was was incredible. I wonder how many of the women's marathoners right have watched today, and have not changed their tactics, but have kind of taken something from it that they're then going to take into tomorrow, or whether they just whether they just kind of don't even bother watching and just just sort of get on with it. Oh, I'd be interested. Mm. Yeah, I mean, and I'm just. <sighs> see how the Brits do, hey? Like, Kelly Thackeray really leading that team. You know, can she... I don't think she's going to trump and milk her rest, but, yeah, what can she do? Um, I think that'll be interesting. So, but uh, but I think talking to Brits, it's worth talking about Megan Keith and Ailish in that 10K. I thought it was it was cool. It was cool to see them together at the end. I thought for Ailish to hang around and congratulate Keith, and Keith just looked like she had just 25 laps of of just... I won't say she was loving life, but afterwards definitely felt like she was overwhelmed and she was like, oh my God, like what, like what an experience. But at the same time, obviously she probably had a little bit of disappointment in her, but, um, but yeah, for them to, at the finish, like it was good day to be British, mate. Like it was, it was cool to see. Um, and obviously they both, both struggled a bit, but, um, but yeah, to have each other at the end of the race and definitely for like Megan Keith to finish, like I'm not quite sure. Surely something's wrong with her. Like surely she has you think got, so. yeah, mate. Surely she's got like COVID. Obviously that's been going. Around. I I don't know, man. But or just yeah. been been a little bit injured, missed a little bit of training. Maybe. We we don't know. Um, I I think yeah, like you say, I think it was great. She just finished it off because I think that is that is something you you would regret, right? Um, did they? Do they have a mix zone at the Olympic Games? Or do they just, by the way, because usually when it's Worlds, I see loads of videos on YouTube and stuff, and that's where you get yeah. like, loads of good info because, you know, everyone's putting videos up in the mix zone. But it feels like like all the press conferences have been just like medal winners. And then... I think like, they're just the ones... Just like TV. I don't think they have like yeah. a, a mix zone with like general media as such. It might be to do with the sponsorship, you know, because I think if, unless you're like an official Olympic broadcaster, you can't cover the event basically we well, can but not properly do you know what i mean yeah i, I just haven't seen anything i you know ask someone actually interesting um but yeah yeah obviously yeah not 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 keeps day but it's got it obviously the obviously that we've just been talking about the marathons but the 10k on the track right if if, if you're not quite on it it's just the it's, oh. it's the longest day at the office isn't oh, it oh god um, if you're just not quite up to the pace that that these these world class athletes are saying, you know, absolutely, absolutely, mate, very very tough. Um, yeah, Chebet phenomenal, Batagati phenomenal, Hassan phenomenal. To be honest with you, um, yeah, Segar's sixth. I mean, Segar's probably learned her lesson as well, not to try and copy Hassan in that triple. Um, and there you go. That that's it. I mean, like I said, we'll. we'll We'll maybe just, uh, yeah, we'll throw out the winner of the prediction contest tomorrow, mate, and we'll review the women's marathon, and that crowns off the Olympic uh, Olympic shenanigans. Yeah, it does. Um, it's been fantastic. Um, but, yeah, we will be back tomorrow to talk about talk about the women's marathon and then just give some, I guess, final thoughts on on the whole thing. But as you can tell from today, um, we've loved it, um, and we sure, we're sure you guys have too. Um, but thanks very much for listening, um, and we'll catch you very soon.